So previously we discussed how the skeleton muscle cells are able to use different types of allosteric effectors and allosteric activators to basically regulate the activity of glycogen breakdown. So we said that in skeleton muscle cells, we have the enzyme known as glycogen phosphorylase that can be regulated and that in turn regulates the breakdown of glycogen. Now, in liver cells, things are slightly different, and that's because liver cells have a different function than of skeleton muscle cells. So in liver cells, their entire goal is to actually regulate the concentration of glucose inside our blood. So our liver is responsible for regulating the concentration of glucose in the blood. And what that means is liver cells can actually mobilize glycogen by breaking down to glucose, but they don't actually use that glucose to form ATP. Instead, they can release that glucose into the blood to basically increase the concentration of glucose in the blood when the blood glucose levels drop below normal. Now, how exactly is glycogen breakdown controlled in the liver? So in the liver, we also regulate the breakdown of glycogen by regulating the allosteric enzyme we call glycogen phosphorylase, but the glycogen phosphorylase inside liver cells is slightly different than the phosphorylase that we find inside skeleton muscle cells. So essentially, the liver phosphorylase is an isozyme version of the muscle phosphorylase. They're pretty much the same molecule with some minor differences. And one important minor difference between liver phosphorylase and muscle phosphorylase is that liver phosphorylase is actually sensitive to glucose molecules. Glucose is an allosteric effector. More specifically, it's an allosteric inhibitor of phosphorylase. So let's take a look at the following diagram. So this diagram describes the fully active R state of phosphorylase A found in the liver and the T state, the inactive state of phosphorylase A of the liver. So essentially, when glucose molecules bind into a specific allosteric regulating site shown here and here, what we have is a transition from the R state, the fully active state, where the activity of the enzyme is high, to the inactive state, the T state, where the activity of the enzyme is low. Now, we can have two different situations. We can basically have a situation in which the blood glucose levels are low, or we can have a situation where the glucose blood level is high. So, Let's suppose we have a high blood glucose level, and this happens after we ingest some type of carbohydrate-rich meal. So when blood glucose levels are high, what happens is this glucose will act as an allosteric inhibitor. It will bind onto special regulatory sites, allosteric sites, and once they bind, they will create a conformational change in the structure of this phosphorylase A of the liver, and it will basically shift the equilibrium toward the T state. In the T state, the enzyme is not active, it has low activity, and so it will not break down glycogen into glucose and that makes sense because after we ingest the meal rich in sugar molecules we don't want to produce and release any more glucose molecules into the blood. Now what about when we have low blood glucose levels? Well when we have low blood glucose levels we're essentially going from this T state to this R state. So when we have very low concentration of glucose in the blood, these glucose molecules will essentially remove themselves and once they remove themselves, a conformational change takes place that shifts the equilibrium toward the R state. And in the R state, the enzyme is fully active and it will bind to glycogen and begin breaking down glycogen into glucose. And then the glucose will be removed into the blood plasma. Now, remember in skeleton muscle cells, we have phosphorylase A and phosphorylase B. In liver cells, we also have phosphorylase A and phosphorylase B. But unlike phosphorylase A, the liver phosphorylase B is not actually sensitive to glucose molecules. In addition, when we discussed skeleton muscle cells, we saw that in skeleton muscle cells, A and P, adenosine monophosphate, is 
an allosteric activator of phosphorylase B. But in liver cells, the phosphorylase B of liver cells does not respond to A and P molecules. And this is primarily because, unlike in skeletal muscle cells, liver cells do not actually experience a change in the energy charge of the cell. So we see that the energy charge inside liver cells remains relatively constant, and what that means is A and P molecules do not actually affect phosphorylase B. So to summarize, let's take a look at the following two diagrams. So if we have low blood glucose levels, what will begin to happen is these glucose will essentially depart from these regulatory sites and that will shift the equilibrium toward the R state. It will activate phosphorylase A of the liver and that will initiate glycogen breakdown. The glucose molecules will be released into the blood and that will increase the levels of blood, the level of uh, blood glucose back to normal. On the other hand, if we have high glucose levels in the blood, like after eating a carbohydrate-rich meal, what happens is the glucose molecules will enter these liver cells, they will bind to these special regulatory sites, and that will essentially inactivate the molecule by shifting the structure into the tense state, and that will stop the breakdown of glycogen, and that will stop the release of glucose molecules into the blood plasma of our body.